Hey everybody, Greg here from MTech. Want to talk to you today about setting up your webcam uh, using open broadcaster software. Now the reason uh, you might want to do this um, is to enable uh, other functionality to the webcam than is supported by the software you're using for your web meetings, whether it be Skype, whether it be Google Hangouts, whether it be uh, Zoom or something else. Uh, using a tool like open broadcaster software allows you to create two important things. Number one, a virtual camera or set of virtual cameras to allow you to create scenes within OBS that you can then share to your uh, meeting software, whether that's again, Skype, Hangouts, Zoom, whatever. Uh, it also though gives you the ability to record directly to your desktop or to your machine uh, from the webcam and all of those other sources. So it gives you a way to create home videos uh, for communicating as well as the tools that you'd use for web conferences. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is visit obsproject.com and download the software. Now the OBS project uh, or, or open broadcaster software is a standalone package that runs on both Windows, Mac, and even Linux uh, software or uh, desktop platforms. Uh, once it's installed, uh, we'll move on to the virtual cam software will provide links to both of those um, which allows you to take the output of the software and turn it into what appears to your computer anyway to be a webcam and we'll go through that setup process in just a second okay so once you've installed obs and started it up for the first time basically you're going to find a, an empty shell of a piece of software uh, the first thing you're going to need to do is to add a camera. So what I tend to do is create a scene called camera, and then I create a source called webcam using the video capture device. Uh, so this should enable uh, and, uh, and fire up your camera. So there's me on the screen. Um, I'm looking actually at a different monitor than I'm recording from, so that's why it doesn't look like I'm looking at the camera. Uh, anyway. So there we go. So we've got a, a, a capture now from the camera. I'm just going to resize it by dragging the red box and setting it up so that it looks more or less right. It's not going to be perfect. Um, I can go into the properties of that camera and click configure video. And when I do that, it'll allow me to do things like change the zoom or, or change the exposure of the camera to make it look as good as possible. And you can tweak the controls in here. Um, obviously they will change or the capabilities will change based on your, uh, your webcam settings. So uh, depending on the camera, they may work better or worse. Um, I usually set this for a custom resolution and then select uh, 1280 by 720 or, or um, something close to that. That's, that's the equivalent of a high def um, format. Uh, and that way, uh, when I scale my screen and I will readjust this now, ooh, there we go. It'll fit um, a typical 16 by nine or regular widescreen laptop or desktop monitor. Uh, so there we go. So we have a webcam defined. The other thing I tend to do is I will try to select a desktop. Um, now, I don't always use a desktop uh, view because it does show everything on your desktop, including your icons, but you can go to uh, display capture uh, and then you can say, oh, monitor. Uh, and I say, okay, and it'll give me the monitors that I can choose from. So there's my primary monitor. Uh, I can choose to capture the cursor uh, or not, as you can see, the cursor will move around. So I'm going to say OK, and now I have captured uh, that desktop. The other thing I can do, and I, I'm going to do this with just a, just a web browser here. Uh, let me see if I can open a new browser window. Uh, new window. There we go. And I'm just going to, I'm going to say I want to capture um, a browser window. Now, you can, the, the reason I'm showing this is because you can use both the browser window as a, as a capture point or a piece of software. So if you're using PowerPoint, you may want to capture PowerPoint, but we'll do it the same way. 
Um, and, and that is to add a new one. And we'll just call this browser, or you could call it PowerPoint. In the sources, we're going to create a application, uh, a window capture. And this one, we're going to call it browser. OK. Oh, because I already called that one. So we're going to call this Chrome. How about that? That'll work. Chrome. When I go into Chrome, I can now pick all of the applications uh, from all of the applications that are currently active on the system. So I'm just going to say new, new tab. So there's the browser window. Now, again, this is now a source that I can move around my screen. Uh, what's really valuable here is once we've created this, we now have a set, um, a desktop, a browser, a camera that we can put together to build a scene. So in our scene, I can actually include a scene and I'm going to include my camera. So there's the camera added to my scene now. Now I can scale this and change it and move it around. I can also then include, uh, let's say the, uh, the browser that we just captured and I can capture that browser window. Now, what's great is because we are using these independently, it means that we can order them, we can stack them, we can move them around. Uh, and so this gives you the ability to create different sort of looks and feels for content you're sharing, as well as for the people that are watching. Uh, you want to talk directly to camera, you switch to camera. You want to talk about the software you're looking at, you switch to the software. These can be enabled by mouse click or by hotkeys. We'll talk about that later, or you can dig around in the configuration yourself to do that. Okay, so I have switched back now to my primary uh, OBS implementation. Uh, the reason being uh, I've got certain things configured, obviously, uh, that let me uh, generate uh, either a single host cam or green screening or picture in pictures or uh, these are all tools that I've got set up on my primary interface. Uh, one of the things uh, though that we're here to talk about is how to use this as a webcam. So we installed the virtual cam package after installing OBS and what that'll do is it'll add an extra box to your tools menu called virtual cam. By opening this um, it gives us some really basic controls. Auto start, horizontal flip. Uh, the reason for that is some software will flip your camera. Uh, the keep aspect ratio, which means that if uh, you pop into certain chat software, um, I think VC is one of the ones that'll do this. Uh, it'll actually reshape your video. And so this allows you to force the aspect ratio. Um, and then it will give you target cameras that you can pick. Um, if it's active automatically, and, and I believe it is by default, um, I can stop that camera and then I can say, okay, what target do I want to use? You can actually enable multiple cameras even. Uh, so different pieces of software can do this, but for the average user, just the basic OBS cameras enough, you click start. And what will happen now is when you open, uh, hangouts or you open Skype or you open any other piece of communication software, what you'll find is that your camera will be listed, the webcam, but you'll also have another camera listed now, which is OBS camera. When you switch to OBS camera, the feed, whatever is in this center section will be piped out as though it was your webcam. That means that your webcam can do your picture in picture, your green screen, your application view, or even a, an away from keyboard screen. And in order to do that, all I did was created a scene that contains an image. And then I just selected the image from my hard drive, said that's good. And whenever I need to, I mean, let's be honest, we're all working from home now. Whenever I need to turn around and talk to my kid for a second, I can pop to the uh, AFK. You can even set uh, certain settings for audio on here, but always remember, mute your audio in your conference first, switch to your AFK, but be aware that they're not 
necessarily independent, or, or they're not dependent on one another. So switching to AFK doesn't mean you can now start yelling at somebody in the background. Uh, you need to mute your microphone in the conference first. This just simply gives you a way to turn off the camera, even though the camera is still pointed at you. See, I'm right here. I see you. I see you right there. But it lets you turn the visuals off so that if you need to adjust, if you need to have a sip of water or you know, you just don't want to be on the camera for a moment. You're still there. You're still active. You're still participating. But your camera has been taken out of the mix for a moment. Uh, remember, big, big tip, space bar while in Zoom will mute your audio. Uh, that's uh, about as uh, complicated as I can get here. However, what we can do is if you've got questions or if you've tried this and had issues um, in our next webinar or on our Facebook page, you can certainly ask us questions and I can put together uh, simple how to's on any of those specific elements uh, that can help you through any trouble spots.